Now we're ready to put in the new sink, disposer, dishwasher, and refrigerator, which all require plumbing of some sort, so we usually put those in together. Now we'll get to the plumbing in just a second, but first we want to bring up the speed on some of the electrical we've done here since we finished the floor. All the GFI switches are in, so now we can hook up our appliances. Now the dishwasher and disposer, those are all dedicated circuits. Now the dishwasher is hot, whereas the disposer, once we plug that in, it'll be operated by the switch up here. To set that up, we ran the power first through this box and then down to the receptacle. So adding the switch gives a control over the circuit. Most of the receptacles we put in were normal 20 amp devices, like this one for the refrigerator, and that includes the dishwasher and the disposer outlets. But most codes now require GFCI protection on all countertop outlets. So we installed GFCI devices at the start of our countertop circuits and ran the other devices off those to give each of them the same GFCI protection. Well, with that work done, the next step is determining where to cut the opening for the sink. Now, the size and position are going to vary depending upon the size and style of the sink that you're installing. Sometimes the manufacturer includes a paper template that you can tape down and trace over, but most often you're going to be working off a set of measurements that are included in the sink instructions. To cut the opening, you can plunge cut with a circular saw, which means starting the saw, dropping it straight down to penetrate the surface, and then cutting forward. It works on all straight cuts, but watch out for binding. After cutting the sides, it's a good idea to screw a plank down into the cutout, which is otherwise hard to handle as you finish cutting. Then use a jigsaw to finish the corners. The plank holds the cutout in place as you finish the cuts, and you can just pull the whole thing out when you're done. It's easiest to install shutoff valves before the sink goes in. These connect with compression fittings over the copper pipes. We ended up with four after splitting the hot water line for the sink and dishwasher and the cold water line for the sink and ice maker. The well, next thing we'll be doing is putting the sink in the opening. So I'm putting a couple beads of silicone caulker on the outside to seal the rim to the countertop. Now, uh, one thing that did happen is when I was cutting this opening is the saw kind of kicked back just a little bit and took out part of the top. We didn't cut all the way down, but uh, just along the surface, I'm hoping that the uh, rim of the sink will cover up this little portion here. Hopefully it will. Well, we usually secure the sink drain before setting the sink in place, but not this time. This unit's pretty heavy. It's cast iron with an enamel finish, and leaving the strainers out allows us to get a better grip. I'm all set with this. Okay, the cost's all ready, so I'll grab this in. Ready? Yep. Oh, we're taking that with. That's all right. Let me grab a hold of the, the drain here. Right. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay, go ahead and set your right down. Okay. That looks good. Here, let me measure it. Okay, let me just go back a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's good right there. It covers up your mistake. Now you want to make sure that the sink is centered properly, not only so it'll look good, but also so it's supported equally on each side, especially when the sink is this heavy. I will also be putting a bead of copper on the outside here just for a little added protection, but because we're going to be working on the sink here a little bit, and for fear of smearing that, we'll go for a while. Right now I want to hook up the supply lines down here. I just have to get this tape off of here. Now usually you hook these up before, I get this tape off my fingers, usually you hook these up before you do the trap, otherwise the trap just gets in the way and uh, realize there's a lot of different sizes and types of supply lines so you want to make sure you know what you're dealing with before you buy anything now these are threaded fitting uh, for a kitchen drain you generally end up with something that looks like this you've got the sink drain with the tailpiece coming down from the sink a special fitting for the dishwasher drain this is for the disposer with a T-fitting going down to the trap assembly required on every drain. That goes to the stub out, which we held off gluing until after the cabinet's in. And uh, we'll probably end up cutting some of this, but we won't know until after we fit it. The drain assembly starts with the strainer, which gets a ring of plumber's putty under the rim to seal it up. Set that down in the drain outlet and press down firmly to seat it in the putty. It's secured with a lock nut screwed on from below. Now we ordered a double bowl sink. The bowl on the right hand side is for the disposer, it's a little bit more shallow. Installed a special drain and mounting assembly for the disposer. 
Now normally you have to buy your own cord. You just attach that through the hole here in the bottom. And then I attach a special drain adapter to our uh, drain on the disposal. Now before you can hook up all the drain assembly under here, you do have to get the disposer in place. Now it's a fairly straightforward connection. The hard part is just getting this adapter ring up there so everything hooks up. There we go. Oh, I just about had it. Yeah, it's a little bit of trial and error. I have to one part down and then get the other one up there. There we go. Same position. There we go. With the disposer in, you can screw on the drain tailpiece and start assembling the drain pieces. We attached the drain arm to the stub out in the wall. And finally, we connected the trap that completed the drain. With the drain assembled, we drilled the holes we needed in the cabinets to run a dishwasher supply line and drain hose. We also drilled a hole through the refrigerator panel for the ice maker supply line. And for convenience, we ran the ice maker supply before putting in the dishwasher. We use plastic tubing, which works like copper, but you do need to insert a metal sleeve into the tube to keep the plastic rigid in the fitting. There's a couple of things to do before installing a dishwasher, like attaching the drain hose. It usually connects in front behind an access panel. For the hot water supply, we use flexible copper tubing, curved to first run down the left side of the opening and then along the back of the opening into the sink cabinet. It gets connected later on. We also attach the power cord, which usually does not come with a unit, but they're available at home centers and hardware stores. Well, wait a minute, let me see. Me let, yeah, let me put this in first, because this is kind of difficult. Yeah, the, the plug and the drain on these aren't that long, so it takes a little bit of coordination. We're going to snake the drain through the, uh, the cabinet over there, and then once we get the electrical plugged in, I can start sliding this in there. I have to do it fairly slow, though, because you don't want to crimp the drain line. You have to, again, coordinate the whole operation so you... And then it's just a matter of leveling the unit and making our plumbing connections. Make sure everything's all set. Okay, that's a tight fit. Yeah. Once the unit's in position, turn the feet under the front corners to raise the unit up to the bottom of the countertop. Then screw up through the brackets into the countertop to secure it. Make sure the screws are not long enough to pierce the top. The dishwasher drain hose attaches to the fitting on the sink's tailpiece, and to prevent backups, you always loop the hose up into the top of the cabinet and secure it to the side with a plastic staple. A hose clamp secures the end to the tailpiece. The dishwasher supply line usually attaches to the unit with a compression fitting, and the other end of that line goes into the hot water shutoff valve with another compression fitting to wrap up the dishwasher installation.